town Pulsnitz. And in there he grew up as a village boy, able to speak not only the local dialect. His training in classical language, Latin, Greek and Hebrew, 12 years it took for him to learn. And he, he mastered them. But he told later on, when he began to study Tamil with people, speaking, reading and writing, he was able to master it within six months. Great fluency. He came to Tarangambadi at the authority of the Danish king Friedrich IV <coughs> on July 9, 1706. When he came, he began to associate himself more and more with Tamil people. See, he chose his dwelling place among the Tamil people first. And Mudaliyappan, Alahappan, and an unknown teacher of 70 years old who was blind were the ones who were his initial Tamil teachers. He employed four Tamil poets, most probably Pulavars, who helped him to decipher Tamil literary books. Maybe there are scholars here who would know about the library, the summary of 119 Tamil books, which does include summary of Tolkapiyam, Nannul, and so many other books. But when he realized the importance of writing a Tamil grammar, he had another background. He wanted to help more Germans and the Danes to learn Tamil before they could come to Tamil Nadu to work among the Tamil people. Because there was a likelihood that more young people would come to serve among the Tamil people here in, in Tarangambadi. And they said, here and there you have introduced us to Tamil words. But we do want to know more about the Tamil language. Because earlier he wrote, few months after his arrival on the 25th of 1706, he wrote this, let me just quote. It would be of great help if one can understand Tamil people from their books, the secrets of their theology and philosophy. One might perhaps find in them much better and more rational elements than in much research writings of Aristotle and other pagan writers. The Tamil people are so intelligent that if they would hear the learned scholars in Europe disputing from their lecterns about logic, rhetoric, metaphysics, they would sarcastically laugh about them and consider such an erudite art to be the greatest foolishness that could be imagined in this world. And then he goes on and on and tell Tamil people love simple statements, practical illustrations and he explains further that for every belief there is something that is written. So just like in Christian faith they have to say it is written. And he wanted to know about, about these important details. Well, when he was in Trankubar, colonial people did not like them. Because the colonizers' importance was not to educate people but to exploit them. The more they suppressed, the more profit they would gain. But Siegenbal's opinion was different. The more he would empower the local people to stand on their own feet, especially people who were denied their privileges, dignity and humaneness. So their goals collided on so many times. And Siegenbal's acquaintance with the Tamil literature and above all Tamil people gave him the distinction of telling about Tamil and its, and, and its ancient nature just like Professor Gregory James illustrated. See it is not from merely hearsay he knew what he was talking about. So with him a new era would dawn. So this particular Grammatica Damulika I, I held it in my hand in 1992. I realized it is in a difficult Latin, it is not an easy Latin because Siegenbal by the time he wrote the grammar he forgot Latin. So he gave here and there a little bit of explanations and asked one of his professors to write the preface. <coughs> so I copied this preface and gave to many of my friends for the past 16 years asking them would you be able to help me in translating it. They read it and returned it to me. They saying we can't do it. It is so hard. Ultimately, 
about last year I found a person in, in Great Britain a sister of Notre Dame sister Harrington for her Latin is just like mother tongue she was so enthusiastic in translating some of the most difficult part of it and then I had the joy of translating the rest of it so that's how this book came, to be, came into existence last week it is not yet released it's just simply the first copy of the Grammatica Damolica. Now let me just illustrate what it contains. Earlier Tamil scholars do, did know and that it, was, it, was, it, it, it existed. But what it contained, it was not easy for them to understand. Except scholars like Gregory James and others might have been able to know. So this particular grammar has eight chapters. The first chapter is about alphabets, both vowels and consonants. The second chapter, the second chapter is about pronunciation, pronunciation of words, Tamil words. How, how should they be pronounced? Where should the emphasis be laid? The third chapter is about nouns, different nouns. How should the, num the nouns be declined or formed? The fourth chapter is about adjectives. It's very interesting. He compares it by following not only Latin but also gra German grammar style of inflecting the adjectives. And he tells in Tamil it doesn't uh, function. The adjectives are not declined. The fifth chapter is about pronouns. In the pronoun, he gives more and more importance to the word near or tangal because they are the only honorific singular because mostly used for God. The sixth chapter is verbs, the longest chapter in this particular book. And to my greatest astonishment, Ziegenbalk heavily depended upon Balsar da Costa because I happened to found, find an unpublished manuscript of Balsar da Costa in the British Library. It does not have the title page. It has about 35 very densely written plays in Portuguese and Tamil. So I compared with the help of one of my friends about the structure of this particular Portuguese grammar, Portuguese Tamil grammar and the Latin grammar and it is my conclusion that whatever is found in Portuguese, Tsigenbal translated in many cases into Latin and then expanded his knowledge or uh, the grammar very widely. The seventh chapter is about particles, small words, but that give importance to the grammar. The last chapter is very unique to Tsigenbalk, it's about syntax, also the shortest paper. See, he wrote it in three months, he compiled it three months. I studied German for a very, very long time, I know the language since about 30 years now, but I would never dare to write a grammar for German. So my experience, may be inadequate it may be, but when I realized how could this gentleman write a grammar within three months, is he so genius? Well, the geniusness of him depended upon the Tamil associates he had with them. Pedro Malayapan was one. He knew many languages and he helped him. And the genius also helped him how he used Balsa da Costa's grammar and how he was aware of Tolkapiyam, Nannol and other Tamil grammars. He included examples from all these sources and enriched it. How was it received? 